Okay. We talk about the grip, we talk about the setup, we talk about the alignment, the pressure in the grip, the balance. Now, how many of you have seen this? Going back to the setup, the person takes the stance and they say, okay, I gotta get my left arm and the club as an extension of each other. I gotta get my chin in, right elbow down, left arm straight, knees in, weight on the inside of the feet. Now these are the things that are very normal. You may laugh, and, but this is what people try to do. Now when you get yourself in that position, then you tell me how you're gonna start moving. And these are the things that make golf appear so darn hard to the average player. I mean, why can't we just take the club and drop the blessed thing there and go ahead from there? It's not that difficult. It doesn't take all this con contortion to put the club behind the ball. The easier it's done, and the more naturally it's done, the better you do it, the more confidence you build. I mean, certainly a person coming to, uh, I had a young lady taking two lessons. I wish I could have you see that person swing the golf club. Has never had a golf club in, their, in her hand, ever. And all I told her was to take it over the shoulder, brush the grass, and put it over the shoulder, look at the target. That's all I told her. I didn't tell her what the body does. I didn't tell her what, what the knees do. I didn't tell her what the arms do. I just told her to take the club, put it over here, brush the grass, put it over here. I mean, it's amazing what you can do with this game if you just do simple things, instead of all that contortion that people try to do. OK, now we've got everything down there. Now we're ready to go. What do we do with this thing to get the ball to go? Well, we swing it. And people say, how do I swing it? I said, I have the slightest idea. You can't tell people how to do things. You can always tell them what to do, but not how. And I'll prove it to you. Young man, stand up, please. Now, I want you to walk to me. And I want you to tell me how you're going to do it. Now, you walk every day, right? Okay, tell me what, no, no. Tell me how you're gonna do it. Well, I'm gonna put one foot in front of the other. Is that how or what? That's what, tell me how. I don't wanna know the what, I wanna know how. I don't know how to do it. That's right. That's what happens to golfers. That's, that's exactly what happens to golfers. They keep trying to determine. I was asked one time, how do I move my arms? I have the slightest idea how you move your arms. I don't even know how I move them. I just move them, period. So you can tell people the what, and you as players can always determine what you want to do, but you can never say to yourselves, this is how I do it. Now, if you would ask me to hook a ball, to show you how to hook a ball, okay? Now, I would say to you, you close the blade of the golf club and swing it like you always do. Now, am I, am I telling you how? Or am I telling you what to do? Always what to do. Always what to do. Never the how. You can never determine the how. The how it's done comes from within you. And you don't know what's going on in there, but you know what you're doing. And it happens because it happens. Not because you determine how to do it. Now, you're going to run a company, and you have never been working for this company before, and they're going to show you how the company runs. OK? Now, what do they tell you? This is what we do here. That's what we do there, and this is what we do here. It's always the what that's important. And the only thing you can deal with, you cannot deal with the how. So you will say to me, well, now, Joe Garnett, I'm trying to swing the club, but I don't know how to swing it, or I don't know what to do to swing it, or I don't know what to swing it. So then my job is to get you to observe me swinging the club with you. Would you come over here, young man? I'll delay your Coke drinking for a minute. Do you know what a swing is? Kind of. You know what a swing is? Yeah, I think so. What is it? Uh, well, it's just emotion. Okay. What kind of emotion? Pendulum motion. Give me a little better description. What is? What is it? Uh, You're on the right track. Up and down? No. What is it? Just back and forth. Right. Now that's the definition of a swing. Now, if you would all go by that definition, how many wrong shots do you think you could hit in your lifetime? Zero. You will never hit a bad one. Okay. 
Come on over here. Go your car. Now swing it for me. And you can't go very far because my arm doesn't. Okay, go ahead. Swing it. That's not too bad. Now, let's see how, if, if you can feel the difference between your swing and my swing. Okay? All right. Now, just stay flexible and swing it. No, just don't. Just hold it. Okay. Can you see any difference? Now, what's he swinging? How does this feel to you? Kind of choppy. Kind of what? Choppy. What do you mean by choppy? I mean, it just kind of feels like you're just going down and going through doesn't feel like it's swinging, it just kind of feels like it's going down, stopping. And okay, you see, there is a difference in interpretation of a swing, do you see? Now, he interprets the swing this way. Now, is a golf swing like that? No. Why isn't it that way? Because, you see, the club is going around you, isn't it? So then you have to have this feeling, right? Mm -hmm. Then when you go the other way, it, it has this feeling. Okay? Now, when he calls it choppy, he's sensing his wrist action, which takes place in there, which he doesn't have when he does it this way. See, now how far could he hit the ball this way? Perfect. Not very far. How far could he hit it this way? Almost double the distance, without really getting yourself in a hitting action. So, see, that's my job. I have to be able to show him what a swing feels like. Okay? And that's what it feels like. Now, what's the difference? Swing it. Swing it. Can you feel it? Can you see the difference? Now he's doing that all himself now. So just keep going, even if I let go. Now I'll get you. No, I'll get you started first. Okay, I'll give you the feeling of the swing. All right. All right. Take over. Does it look different? See. Now he has sensed what the swing is. I didn't tell him how to do it. I just showed him what it is, and now he can produce it. Now. How were you doing that? <laughs> Nobody knows. Okay. Nobody knows, but you were doing it. See? So that's, that's the difference between a swing in motion and not. See, a swing in motion is a very what? Very free action. The wrists are free. The arms are free. If you could feel this man right now, compared to what he was when I first started, I mean, his muscle tension has almost completely disappeared. Now, do it the way you do it at the beginning. Can you see the difference there? I mean, it's all tied down. See? Now that is not a swing. Yeah. It's not a free motion of yeah, motion. He can't keep his club low to the ground, and he can't get his weight back, and he can't. <laughs> <laughs> you're right. You're right. <laughs> now hold it, okay? Because I want to throw it back. Now, when you do that, when I do that, yeah. just take it up there and leave it there. All right, here it goes. Now, would you say that he's turned properly? Yeah. Would you say that he's shifted his weight? Yeah. Not much. I mean, it's balanced. Pretty good. Pretty good. How did that happen? Okay, come on down. How did it all happen? I mean, all I did was threw the club back. He, didn't, he wasn't even aware where it was going to go or what I, how hard I was going to throw. How did all these good things happen? Because that's the way it's done. That's the way you respond to the club. Now watch it now on this side. Do the same thing now, just stay very flexible. Now you're getting tight again. That's right. Hold it right there. No, you, you didn't expect that, huh? <laughs> now when, see this is again, when a person is, is in his position, he's got to trust me 100% and just go with what happens, okay? You thought you were going to hit me? All right, here it goes. Hold it. Where's his weight? Well, how did it ever get there? Okay, did you try to shift it? Okay. Well, this is the way... Okay, you can go sit down now. These are the way these things should happen. And I'll guarantee you that you could never get this young man to shift his weight the way he did there consciously because he doesn't know what rate it's doing it at, and he doesn't know when it starts to shift, actually, okay? All right, when we start to swing this club, 
And again, the differentiation here is extremely important, and please remember it. When you swing the club away from the ball, you're using your hands to swing the club head around you over the shoulder. And when you get the club to the top like that, a shift of responsibility takes place, and the whole thing transfers 100% to the arms. From that point on, the hands are used to simply transmit what the arms are doing and to control your club. That is all they do. Okay, so when you get to here, you just use the arms to swing it to the other side. And basically speaking, that is all there is to the game of golf. Okay? The backswing is merely a positioning movement to get the club to a position from which you can start to generate the velocity which you want to generate. And you start generating it and you just use it as it's being developed and you leave it alone. And these three words, leave it alone, are the most important words and the ones which are the most difficult for a golfer to abide by. Everybody's trying to help the club somewhere. If you were making a circle, you wouldn't go from here to there and just do something down here and then continue, would you? You would go from here and go right back to there. Well, that's what we're doing with a golf club. We've got the club at this point, and where should we be going from there? Right over here, to the other side. Complete. Complete your circle. And that in itself gives you a very clear picture of what you should do. Now, as you're swinging this club, you should know what it's supposed to do. And it has to do some very important things. So there's your geometric principle, which states that in any circle, all the horizontal cords are what to each other? Parallel to each other. Could you go through those positions again? Yeah. Halfway back on the top, halfway to the ball, on this side, halfway to the follow through, and then at wherever the club gets horizontal. Okay? Now, as you play, it, those of you who are already playing, you may do this all right. This, I'm just telling you what the principles are. Uh, people who are beginning, you have to be very conscious of doing it because that's what keeps the club square in relation to you. Now, the club never stays square in relation to the target line. It stays square in relation to you. So that if you take the club over here, you should be able to turn around, face it, put it down, and have it exactly the same as it was at the address position. And you do the same thing in the follow-through. When you stop it here, you should be able to face it, put it down, and it should be exactly the same it is at address. And of course, you can check that all the time. You can do that from the top as well. You take it to the top, you should be able to come up without changing anything and put it down, and it should be exactly the same way as it is at address. Now, if you fool around with it a little bit, then you see you get it this way, see, and you come bring down, and now when you put it down, you're not going to be the same as it was. Your article talks about to you, to the player. Square in relation to the plane. We're talking about the plane. Well, the in that tape. In, in another tape, we talked about the club face is, um, always stays square to the plane. No. It stays on the plane. See, it's right on the plane there. It's just as if your hands were that way. Okay. See, it stays on the plane. But, yeah, square in relation to me, which means that it never changes. As, as I look at it, it's always the same. In other words, if I take it from here and I put it there, it looks at me the same as it was down there. It's the same thing as if I had it this way. It looks exactly the same there, there, and there. There's no change. See? And then the club will always be square at the ball. Okay, a very important thing that you must remember is that when you swing the club back, you use two hands. Now you see and you hear that golf is a left-sided game. That's just plain foolishness. I mean, if you're right-handed, your power's on the right side, use it. Why would you want to do everything with the left hand? If you're going to do that with the left hand, take your right hand off and just use the left hand. You do a better job that way than trying to carry this one around and just have it not do anything. If you do not use the right hand in the backswing, you will become laid off become what I call left hand dominant. And when you're left hand dominant, the right hand is, is dormant and the club gets into that plane. Very difficult to hit the ball correctly from that because you've got to get back on the plane somehow. You're very prone to shank from that position because when I do that, you watch this point. What does it do? It goes that way, doesn't it? 
So that means the club has moved out there. Now, if I don't get it back in, in here, where's, where's that little ball I had? See, when I take my left hand and use it, see, in that way, now see, this is so close to the ball. Now, if I don't get it back in here somehow, I'm gonna hit the ball over there. So when you see people doing this, don't stand over there. <laughs> so you use both hands. Now when you use both hands, the club then can, can be placed in the position that you want it. But you cannot do it with one hand. This hand always has a tendency to roll this way. This one has a tendency to go that way. Now when you put them both together, see if I take my club back with my, left hand, my right hand only, I'll do that. That's the natural way for the hand to go. It's very hard for my right hand to do that. It's very easy for my left hand to do that. That's why you have to use everything in pairs, because they balance each other. So you use both hands to take the club to the top of the backswing. Okay. Now, when you swing forward, then you simply use the arms to swing the club to the other side. Why the arms? Well, the arms do two things. Number one, they supply the speed, and number two, they retain the coil that you have set with the backswing. And the coil, yes? Define arms for me. Please. Right here. That part. Not forearm. No, not forearm. If you use, if you, you can see it very clearly here. If I use my forearm, I'm going to do that. Okay? That's just as bad as using the hands to cast from up there. Anytime you use the arm, the forearm, you're going to do that kind of motion. Now, when the arm is used, the arm moves this way. So you're using, this is the arm. If you were in a physiology class or anatomy class, and you, in a test, they ask you for the bones of the arm, and you put these down here, you flunk. Because this is the forearm, it is not the arm, okay? And too many times when I ask people, where, point to your arm, they'll point to that. Now, well, that's not the arm, that's the forearm. This is where you do your job, up there, okay? If you're gonna throw a ball, you will play football? How do you, how do you throw a football? You throw it that way. It, you, 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 never, you never throw it with a forearm and you never throw it with a hand either. It's always with your arm. The guy that's taking it back with his left hand. <laughs> Very impossible. Now, people say, well, which arm do I use going forward? Use both arms. If this one isn't working, you do the same thing on the forward swing as if you were not using this hand going back. It gets out of balance. So when you're not using this one, and this one takes over, and then you say, oh, I've used too much right hand. Manuel, yes. when, uh, when I um, had some lessons from Scott, and he talked about using this part of the arm right. and so on. Uh, maybe it's because I'm uncoordinated, but I, it's just hard for me to think about a certain part of the arm being used. You see, you well, see yeah, isn't that interesting? Doesn't... See, and I get th this thrown at me all the time. How many times do you think you use your arms in the course of a day? What are you doing right now? How did you do this to put it in your pocket? <laughs> you do it all the time. But as I say, I, I, don't, uh, I don't, don't have to think about that at all to do that. And when I take my, my swing, I don't have to either. Is that what you're saying? Or? Well, if you, what I'm saying is that the only part of you that can move the golf club from the top to create velocity are your arms. Now. If you, I don't know how you handle the club, but you may handle the club already with the arms, in which case there's no need to tell you to use the arms because you already do. For instance, in my case, I don't have to tell myself to move with the arms because, you see, when I'm here, I try to move the club as a whole. Now, I cannot move the club as a whole and not use my arms. When I try to use club head, then I don't use my arms. But if I want to move this club from here and put it back to here, what gets it there? No, it's not. No, wait a minute. No, just do. I'll show you. Take a hold of your club. Do it over here so you don't hit that young man behind you. Oh well. <laughs> All right. Just take it up there. Now watch this. Now I don't want to I don't want you to worry about whether you use hands, arms, whatever. Okay. Put it down here again, please. What did he use? Well, of course. Did you have to think about it? No, I didn't think about it. That's right. But you did it because this is the only way that you can get the club back to here. Now, take the club and put it over your shoulder on the right shoulder. See, that's the, what did he do? He used his hands. The only way he can do it. Okay, put it back here. That's right. Now, that, that's the arm concept. That's all it is. 
what if what if I watch this watch the question kept the arms here yes okay and move the shoulder never gets down here does it it never gets there do it with your hips it never gets down there there's only one thing that get and get it down and that's what put it down that's right that's right now I don't teach the arm concept unless the person is using another part of himself to do it See, now I use that drill a lot, and for those of you who have any difficulty getting the club to the ball square, that's a marvelous drill to use. You, you put it here, and you just put it right back down. Where's Jerry? That's what I use with my dad. Because my dad, Ernest Jones' words are that you swing the club with the hands at all times. And I took time one time to try to talk to my dad and say, you can't use your hands on the forward swing. And I had a very difficult time convincing him that you do use the arm. So I, one day in his lone living room, I said, take the club back down. And he brought it down just like you did. And I said, what did you bring it down with? And he said, my hands. Come here. And this is what I did to him. Take it up there. I said, put it back where it was. They couldn't get it down, see? Okay. Everything you do in your life where you require power or big movements is done with your arm. If you're driving your automobile and you're going to turn the wheel, what do you use? Anybody? Sure. You hold it with your hands, but you sure work the arms to do it. You, I've never seen anybody go like this to try and turn the wheel. And I've never seen him do this either. <laughs> Could you talk a little more about the distinction between the arm and the forearm and all of this? Yeah, the arm, the forearm is from here to there. I mean in the swing though. Well, if I'm here and I want to get the club down to there, if I use my forearm and not use my arm, I can't get it there. That's as far as I can go. It's not going to get down there. Okay? This part has to move. I'm not saying this stays motionless as it gets into this area. It, starts, it stays motionless now. See, so what you do is you move the arm just like that, you see, and it's getting everything down. Now, when gravity starts working somewhere, when it gets close to the ball, then you see, that now you get the reaction. That reaction is what gives you the extra speed, okay? But if you try to do it yourself, then you stop this, and the moment this stops, your power's gone. Imagine if you're going to throw a ball, and all of a sudden your arm stops, and you go like that. Yes. Did you ever see people when they take a backswing, they, they don't cock their wrist, they cock their arm? Sure, sure, I see it all the time. Okay, is that a reaction because they're not swinging back with the hand? Right. And they're using the elbow as a hand? Right, of the exactly. But you're using your arm, your forearm, your hand, you're using everything. No, I'm not. To put the, to bring the, the reaction, everything is being... How should I say it? Everything is reacting to the speed of the arm. You know, if I'm going to throw a ball, I don't try to get my elbow to do that or my, my forearm to do that. It's a response of my arm speed. So in other words, if a person had very well-developed arms, all they'd have to do is hold the club. They that's all. They wouldn't need forearm or hand no, strength at all. No, that's correct. That's correct. Because they're not the ones that are doing the work. So the velocity of the, of the club is coming from the arms. From the arms. That's right. So Just like in everything else. If I were throwing a ball underhand as far as I could, why would I move? I certainly wouldn't move it this way. Well, I've heard people say exercise your forearms and take rubber balls. And well, that's for conditioning. That's okay for conditioning. But, you know, I watched a tournament, a caddy tournament, years ago. And the caddy tournament was organized by my lady's district in, in, in the Milwaukee district. And I had something to do with it. So I went to watch these boys play one day. There was a young man that had polio in his arms. His arms were no bigger than the shaft really affected by polio, okay? He had some kind of little mechanical thing that his, his, his thumbs just kind of flew in every direction. So they had a little clamp on the thumb so they would stay, you know, steady. So they got the club on and he had enough strength in his fingers just to hold the club. How far do you think that youngster hit the ball? 230, because I paced it. Wow. 230. Now he had no speed here, no strength I should say, and nothing here either. I mean he was just Nothing there. Where did he get the speed? 
All he did was just, you know, the, the speed comes from, the, the power comes from the muscles in the back, and they move the arms. So those were still good. So he just got those things going like that, you know, and boy, that club just flew. He had so little strength, he couldn't deter it. Once he got it going, he just went. I mean, there was nothing to, that he could do. He couldn't, absolutely. He was, it, I just was in awe to watch this young man because he hadn't taken any lessons from anybody. He just developed it on his own because of therapy and so forth. And it was an amazing feat to watch this youngster hit the golf ball. He wasn't as good with the irons because when he took a divot, then of course he kind of, things fell apart a little bit for him because of the lack of strength. But you teed that ball up for him and he was just unbelievable. Both arms that way? Yes, both arms. Does that mean a person with stronger arms is gonna hit the ball fine? Yes, no, oh, exactly. What muscles are there? Well, the big muscles. No, the big muscles in the back. Back in here. And well, if, if, uh, if the swinging of the arms... Um, no, no, wait a minute. No, I didn't... Listen to me, please. I did not say that you swing your arms from the top. I said that you swing the club. Now, when you talk to me and ask me that question, you have to say, when you tell me to swing the club with my arms, you can't say it to me any other way, because that's what I'm talking about. Okay. So if I swing, swing the club with my arm, yes. uh, you're saying every all the other things will respond. Could I not swing this club with my arms like that and have my hips just do this? Yes, but see, you didn't respond. Oh, absolutely. You can do anything. Now, that doesn't mean that, that your arm concept is a guarantee that you're going to do. You have to be responsive. You have to be responsive. I mean, nothing, it's just like, like your car. I mean, you can say this is the right mechanical thing, but if you lock the w rear wheels, you can do anything you want, it won't go. So I could be swinging with my arms. Uh, oh yeah, and, and not hit the shot correct, sure. Sure. You can, do, you can do an awful lot of things. Do exercises to strengthen our back and so forth. If you want to hit, you strengthen your back muscles for golf purposes. You get a big tarp and hang it in your garage and just beat it to death 10 minutes a day, both right-handed and left-handed. Because those are the muscles that you use to get the club to go. Now, do, doing this is not gonna do any good to your golf muscles, you see. You gotta be specific, but we should work on specific. Sure, if you wanna do that, and now, isn't that motion what you're trying to do with the golf swing? Well, you're using the same muscles and you're developing those muscles, and that's what you should do. Yeah, pull-ups are okay. Chin up, you mean? Yeah, right. Yeah, because, the, the, oh yeah, it comes from there, sure. Man, well, one thing that, that we've heard in reading and watching TV and all this for years and years mm -hmm. that you never talk about, and I know Jerry never talks about, is shoulder turn. Okay. Is that something you saw, that well, I just showed you with this young man. When I swung the club back for him, what did his shoulders do? He was at 90 degrees to the, to the line of flight. See, if all you have to be, believe it or not, is responsive to what you do. If you don't fight the motion of this club, you'll never do anything wrong. It's when you fight it and try to inject yourself in some way that you do the damage. See? If you take this club and just let yourself go, I'm not, there's no way I cannot turn. You know, the problem is, I mean, well, you know, you're doing that from here and then swinging. That's making difference. You can do it right. Here. You can do it right from there. Same. If you're swinging, the club is taking you along. You're creating. Even though in this area, I'm sure that when I swing the club back, you wouldn't be caught in the middle with it. Right. I mean, it's going pretty fast, speed-wise. So there's enough momentum there to carry you. Yeah, but when you take it from a dress position and yes. start it up, there's no momentum to start with. No, but you create the momentum when you swing it. See, you don't turn here. You start to turn, but the full turn is completed because, let's put it there, and you, you take it up. It's all, it's all response. Mm -hmm. It's all response. So are you, and you're in the back swing, it, it's a true swing. Sure. The back swing is a swing. Sure, and so is the so forward swing. You don't want to just put it back there. You no. Can swing it back. The reason you can't put it back there is because, you see, a lot of things have to happen. You have to go with the club and put your body also in a position for which it can react to what you're trying to do. Well, if you go back with your hands and you're swinging it back with your hands. Yes, is that right? yes. So you're swinging back with the hands and right. swinging forward with the arms. Right. But you better, you've got to be responsive. Let your shoulders be responsive. The whole body, everything. Right. See, if I get rigid in the legs when I go back, I can't turn. Well, that's really the problem with my with my hip being in the way is that I'm just not relaxed enough. Very possibly that's so. Very possibly that's so. I had a lady at the club that hit the ball this way.
just like this. I never changed her. <laughs> oh, that went straight. I never changed her. People would say, well, why didn't you change? I said, she's hitting the ball perfect. Why should I change her? If that's the rhythm she has, heck, doesn't her, her weight transfer beautifully? I mean, I should change that? It's, 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 it's yes. Uh, when you get at the top of your back swing, mm -hmm. what goes through your mind to, to start the... Well, in my mind, I just take the club and swing it from here as a whole. Not the club head, not the butt end, the whole club from here, put it over here. What do you think when you're back? That's what I just told you. I just told you. I just take the club from here and put it over there. Now, suppose you're in the kitchen, okay? And you have a plate full of, full of food, okay? And you want to take it from the counter of the sink and put it on the stove. What do you think about it? Not much. <laughs> That's right. You're taking it over there. That's all. You don't worry about what do I have to do now to get it over there. You just take it from there, you put it over there. Same thing with a golf club. You've got it, you've got it here, put it over here. Just that simple. I can't lose a pot. Yeah. Sure. That's what we're trying to do. We're trying to take the club from this point and swing it from here, go over there. And that's all. Can I have another ball, please? Well, everybody does. Everybody does. And that's when, you, see, you're trying to figure out how am I going to do it. You don't have to worry about that. Now, you may think I'm oversimplifying this. I'm not. This is the way I play. Thank you. See, my only job is to make this club move. Is that right? Now, the club will take care of the ball, so I don't have to worry about that. So I take the club from here to there, put it there. And that's all I do. Huh? I don't care about anything else. And that's the way. I'll play tournaments like this. I'll play with my best friends. I'll play alone. This is what I think about. I don't know anything else. That's all I need to do. Did you ever have to think about other things? Pardon? Did you ever have to think when you were just beginning about 62 years ago? Just because you're a beginner doesn't mean you have to do something different than I do. If you had never nailed a nail in a piece of wood, would you think differently than I do when I've nailed a lot of them? What would your purpose be? To get the nail in, in the wood. What's well, the same as mine? Why does golf mean you have to be different when you're a beginner? Somebody says, well, I'm going to write a book on teaching women. Or you got to write a book on teaching juniors. You do the same thing with everybody. Everybody's trying to do the same thing, to take the club from here and put it here and take it over here. I don't care whether you're a male, a female, 20 years old, 30 years old, 10 years old. You're all trying to do exactly the same thing. So you don't have to treat people differently. But it's, it's very important that, that you, you keep these, these thoughts simple. I mean, they're, they're not complicated things. And you've got to thank my profession for making it difficult. <laughs> because I'll tell you, some of the things that, are, that, that have been advanced are, are, are ridiculous. A young man came to my club one day. He was a good friend of mine and a good friend of my assistant's. And he comes over to me and he says, Manuel, I have the secret to the game of golf. And when anybody says that to me, I don't listen to anything I say, let's go play, okay? So that's exactly what I did. I said, let's go play nine holes. The lesson, the, uh, excuse me, the, uh, the, the men's tee and the Milwaukee Country Club is elevated from the ladies' tee, maybe about 20 feet, okay? So he gets up there and tells me what the fuck. Bounces it on the ladies' tee and then on the fairway. Guess that's okay, try another one. Now that man played nine holes and never got a ball off the ground. I'll tell you what his theory was. It's the counterclockwise rotation of the fingers of the left hand at hip level as you're coming into the ball. Now, now you know what that involves? He showed me after, when I said, now tell me how you do it, after he was successful. So he takes it here and he drops the club in here. And I said, how can you hit the ball from there? I said, I'm going to go this way. That's going to go over there. That's where the theory comes in. See, because when you rotate these fingers this way, you see it gets the club back on line. <laughs> You're talking about something complicated, impossible to do. Now, if he can't do it, how is he going to get you to do it? <laughs> golf teaching, you know, golf teaching is no work at all. I work 14 hours a day. I don't get tired. They're very simple things, and the people do them right away. There's no, no work to it. 
if they'll work with me. Now, when I get somebody that fights me and won't try to do it, then that's a lot of work. But when you get a person that, that tries to do it and, and just makes the effort, like teaching golf is the easiest profession in the world. I mean, how much, how much work is it to take the club from here, put it there, and put it there? I mean, there's nothing to that. That's right. But you see, most of you think there's a lot to it. You, boy, that's because you've played a lot. Nah, I've been doing this since I was a little kid. I've never been trying to, to mechanize or do something. I just make the swing and I let the swing take care of it. What would you think about this one? Some years ago, I, I injured my left thumb in a bunker. And what happened was that I, I couldn't hold the club with my left hand. So I decided that if the swing was as good as I thought it was, I didn't need the left hand. So when I came through the ball, I just let the club slip out. So I played golf this way. Now here's my left hand over here because the swing's doing it. I don't have to worry about it. Once I get the swing going, just like that young man with a pole, once I get the thing going with whatever acceleration I want from here, it's done. My work is done. I don't have to keep pushing the thing. So if I get it going from here, leave it alone. Again, those words, leave it alone. I'm going to get that. And you know, I don't practice that shot at all. I only do it in groups like this. I've never hit a bad shot. If I had the gumption, I'd play golf like that. If I never hit it crooked, I get just as much distance. And I'll change if it happens, I, like I did in, in, uh, in Deltona one year. I heard it on the ninth hole, I went right back to this, hit eight greens in regulation figure, shot 37. Where because, you pardon? When do you let go? Let go before I don't know. <laughs> it, it, ju it just comes out. It, it just, it, I can't do it. I don't think I can. I can guess, but I can't do it exactly. So I don't know where it happens. See, it, it, it's this way. Because I couldn't hold it on this side. Very light, very light. Oh, it, it's hardly holding here because I couldn't hold it. So I just had the hand on there, but very light. My right hand, it's almost a right-handed swing. And then the, the speed just takes it right out. But this is the trust that I have in the swing that if I swing it, I cannot hit a bad shot. Now you're going to ask me, well, why don't you win every tournament you play? Well, it's a little different story. You know, as I said, the proportion of the golf ball is simple. It's the putting it together so that you do it right the first time. And of course, when I don't practice and don't play much, my touch around the greens, if I don't hit the green, is poor. So therefore, instead of getting a par, I may get a bogey. So therefore, you do that three times, and you got 78 instead of 72. So, but uh, I think that you can make your, your, your game so much simpler by trusting the motion, build the motion, and use it. OK? Yeah, but I can't hit the balls far. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I can I can do it. But it doesn't go as far because I, I don't have that much. See, this hand is not working when I do that. It's only this one, so I can't get as much power. Because this arm is going in its weak direction. It's not going in its strong direction. This one is going in its strong direction. See? But if I hurt my right arm, I can do it this way too. I won't hit the ball as far, but I can still play. Sure. Just like when I tell a person to use the, the right hand they haven't been using, they always think they're reaching the right hand exclusively. It's just a contrasting feeling. All right, any questions so far about the swing or anything else? In your consciousness, really, no. There, you are coiling. Oh, yes. But you read a lot about you've got to build up this coil, this strong... If you keep your weight equally distributed on your feet when you take it back, you get an automatic coil. Now, you watch me and tell me if I coil more here, or here, you bet your life. And all I did was keep my weight equal in one and let it shift on the other. Yeah, and keep my balance. Come over here. Now watch yourself in the back because I'm going to swing the club back. No, I'm going to swing it. No, I'm going to swing it. Oh, you're going to swing. You come over here. Get in behind me. Now put your hands on my on my back, right, right about in there. Okay. Now watch yourself because I'm going to swing it back. Okay. Now this is my shift. How much coil do you feel there? Right. Now I'm going to keep my weight equal. Oh, yeah, it's really tight. And I haven't even gone to the top yet. Yeah. Can you feel that? Yes. Well, what, you, what seems more powerful to you? 
the second one. Well, sure. And yet, I have not tried to coil. All I've done is swung the club, gone with it, and kept my weight equal. But those muscles really get tight. Not necessarily. I mean, people hit the ball very far when they shift it over, but they lose the consistency. But, but what I'm saying is that your muscles, if you're going to feel that your muscles are effective, they're much more effective when you don't do this and you get them coiled. I mean, if I'm going to hit something on the ground hard, I certainly would coil my, my muscles this way. I wouldn't go like this with no coil. So it's got the same thing. Anything else? Yes. When, when you take the club back on the back swing, do you do it with the hands? Two hands, yes, sir. Both hands? And with just the antenna swinging over the shoulder, you know, just that simple, not without worrying about going here and there and well, there and... Explain over the shoulder. Right here. Well, this to me could be over the shoulder. No, that's over your that's head. That's over the shoulder. That's over the shoulder, but the other one's over your head. Yeah, okay, over the... This is over the head. Well, your, your head's about that long, you know, yeah. going back. <laughs> yeah, over the shoulder means that, that, that it's right over this part. If I swing the club that far, where is it? Over the shoulder. Now, but if I if I come at it for the drive, where is it? Over the shoulder. Over the shoulder. But you did it with your both hands. Yes. You didn't do it with your arms. No. So you're trying to position the shaft over your shoulder. Yeah. Yeah. Over here. Not in here. You're not trying to get your hands over your shoulder. No. 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 And you put the club. You put the club. And that's where it goes. No matter what club you've got, if you've got a wedge from here and you swing it, where's it go? The, show. the only difference is that with my driver, my hands are lower. With my wedge, my hands are higher. Because of the plane. And that's all. And you can check that by just turning right in front of you and you can be in this position right here. Well, that's the head position. They don't change, the rest of the stuff you can't check. So if you want to see if you're over the shoulder, see, I, can be, I can be correct here. I can put it here and be down the same way. But when you have it this way, all you have to do is just bring it down and vertically and see if it hits you on the shoulder. No. That's only for no. the pump face. Yeah. Because in that situation there, we're talking about a longer shaft. It's going to be low. It would be more over here. Well, no. No. It'll be still over the shoulder, Steve. But you see, when I come at it from here, I'm coming at it with a lower. It's still over the shoulder, but it's lower. When I'm coming at it from here, you see, it's a, it's a more upright swing because it's shorter, so, but I'm still over the shoulder. Okay? It's flatter with the driver. Yes. Yes, as you go from the waist to the, to the driver, it becomes a little flatter, so your hands come down. And this is the fallacy that you, you hear, get the hands high. Your hands cannot be high or low, they stay on the plane. They come down vertically then, correct? To, to, to check it, you have to come down here? dead vertical, yes. Okay, so with the, with the driver, I'm here, with the wedge, I'm up here. Right. But they're in the same line. Right. Yeah, well, what about people that see your students that bend their left arm? Is it, is it their problem? I don't get too concerned with that. And how about, like, a Oh, that I do get concerned with. That's when people try to get a little bit cocking action on the top. Right. Instead of allowing the club to cock the wrist at a gradual place, they try to get it here, and then all of a sudden they try to, to cock it up there. You said swing the club, so you don't want to, I mean, you don't, your, your counsel is to set, to try to set the club. No, no. So that there is a tendency, I guess, to have that little bounce or kick. Or there shouldn't be a bounce. You don't want that. Now, if you, if you have that, if you loosen your grip, is that where that's coming from? It's coming from your hands. You give it a little extra. When I, it doesn't make any difference. If you take a look at my shadow here, okay, you'll find that no matter how fast I swing the club, my club stays there and it just stays that still. That's See? what you want. Yeah. You don't want this club bouncing up there. And that's, Is there a tendency to be a little faster with your back swing, no. with your swing, than, no. than, than say, a, no. the idea of a one piece thing? No. Away? Doesn't a fast back swing ruin a lot of golf swings? No. I have not seen back swings that are too fast. And I've taught a lot of people. Really? I've seen them jerky, but not too fast. So the former, the too slow, yes. Ways. Beg your pardon? As long as it's the same both. No, it can be the same both ways. Your speed going forward is 100 miles an hour. Going back, you don't have that. Well, the speed going back is much slower than it is going forward. Put your club down here, please. Now, vertically. Just put it on your shoulder. Don't think about golf. Just put it on your shoulder. No, no. Vertically. Uh, Vertically. Straight up. Yeah. All right. Do it again. Put it on your shoulder. See, that should be the speed of his backswing. 
Whichever way a person puts the club, instinctively, whichever way you put it from here to there, that should be your speed of your backswing. Well, what, what exactly is tempo then? It's tempo, whatever speed you do it with. Everybody has a different tempo, and you are a different. If you're different every day, so you have a different tempo every day. Whatever tempo is working on the day you're playing, you should hold. God, no. They don't, go back, they don't go back too fast. They go back suddenly. I've never seen a person that can turn the finger back too fast. You don't want, you don't want the club to go past parallel at all. Because I'm not worried about the parallel. That's a different story. Now, if, if he did this, would he ever go too fast? Probably not. That's right. You wouldn't even think about it, would you? You just do the club there and put it here. And with whatever speed you do that, that's the same thing you're doing over here. With whatever speed you have to put it here, you use there. Just, just your own. And everybody's going to be different. Some people do it faster than others. But see, too fast, for instance, if I try to do it this way, like my friend Mr. Lardner did, who was president of PGA, uh, the USGA, if I blinked, I missed his backswing. He's too fast for me, but he's just right for him. You take a person who, who, who does this, that's too slow for me. It's perfect for him. See, we take the person and find out what they can do. You see, there's no stereotype. Everybody's a little different. You watch the guys on the tour. And boy, that speed going back is not always the same. See, everybody's a little different. But you should use your tempo, whatever you, you, you feel like. And believe me, some days your tempo is much greater than others. But, okay. It seems that, I'm sorry. Go ahead. It seems that people that try to set the tempo on their backswing and slow the tempo on their backswing, they're not really swinging the club. They're not, they're because that, see, now they're doing it slow. They're not doing slower, they're doing, they're doing it slow. So what happens is that they carry it. See, when you carry it, you don't allow the speed to turn you. So you know, if I take it back this way, I'll guarantee you that's not the same turn that I get when I swing it, is it? Because you have nothing to respond to. Okay, we're, gonna we're gonna... One other thing, we're gonna have a tempo that's gonna be close to the same every day. Maybe we swing it back at 20 miles an hour, but one day it's gonna be 18, next day 20. That's exactly right. And it's going to be the same going this way. Some days you'll swing at 100 miles an hour, some days you'll swing at 90. And I'll tell you, when you have a, a speed of 100, don't try to get it to 90. And when you've got it to 90, don't try to make it 100, because you're not going to be able to do it. On that particular day. On that particular day. What do you want to do if you need an easy shot, though? You need an easier shot. If you need one? An easier shot. Let's say you're Take a three-quarter shot with a longer club or whatever. Okay. You'll find that there are days that I will hit for 150 yards of 600, and other days I'll hit an 8-iron. It's different, so therefore you go with what you are.